As a second example, consider a problem of segmenting the world that we see into distinct objects. So when you see something like this, you don't see an undifferentiated blob of shapes and colors. Rather, you see different objects that stand in relationship with one another. You might see a man, a house, a couple of birds. How do we do this? What are the cues that generate the sort of distinctions that segment one object from another? Well, this was a great topic of study by psychologists uh, many decades ago, the Gestalt psychologists. And the Gestalt psychologists proposed principles that lead us to segment one thing from another. So one example of such a principle is proximity. Things that are close together relative to other things tend to be seen as distinct. So you would naturally see this. There's an indefinite number of ways you could, in principle, break up these circles. But the natural temptation to say there's three groups. Um, and we segment these into three groups because the objects naturally cluster together as being close in space. Or this. Again, there's all sorts of ways you might break this up, but you're naturally prone to break this up into two things. In fact, you might even see this as two objects, maybe one jutting into another or one lying on top of another. And the objects get segmented into two because they're distinct patterns. So here it's similarity that causes you to divide one thing from another. There's closure. So one natural way to, to see this is as a square laying on top of the circle. Why? Because the square is closes up. It's a natural form. And so while it's logically possible to see the circle as broken up with a jutting edge uh, on the top left corner, that's not how you normally do it. You normally see as one object on top of, the, of another. Similarly, there's good continuation. So the simplest continuation of these uh, lines has A leading to B and C leading to D. There's nothing logically wrong with saying, oh, here are two complicated lines. One goes from A to C and the other one goes from D to B. It's just not natural. We make the simplest continuation. There's common movement. You would naturally see these two clusters as two different groups. And finally, good form. So imagine you see the object on the far left. You see it's a plus sign. It's a natural sign. There's a natural symmetry to it. There's clean right angles and so on. Or this. Well, that could be a single thing too. It could be like a board with another board sticking into it and built as a single thing or just a single carving of a certain unusual shape. But for that case, you'd be more likely to see it as two things. Say one piece of wood on top of another piece of wood. And this is because uh, the lack of good form causes you to see things that way. If you go back to this original picture as an exercise, you could see how clues like uh, similarity, proximity, and the like could help you distinguish different things uh, from other things. So for instance, the walkway that the man is walking on, the patterns on the walkway are similar. And this is why you might see the whole walkway as a single distinct thing, separate from the man and separate from the house. Now, sometimes these principles um, can lead to some clever illusions. And what's interesting is you probably see a triangle. In the middle, a light triangle. It turns out that triangle is an illusion. The Pac-Man on the side are consistent with a triangle coming out of it. And so your mind finds it such a beautiful, natural, simple form, it fills it in, creating an object where none exists. And here's another case with a square. And to see that it's an illusion, to see there's really no lighted square in the middle of it, if the Pac-Man go away, the impression of the square goes away too.